right, let's get started. Open up my script editor here, and we will go ahead and put some code in here to grab all of those values. I'm going to call this convert dates, because what we want to do is take all of those dates, grab them, convert them to the cycle, A1, B2, so on and so forth. So let's call, um, not clues, or values. Uh, and we're going to get the spreadsheet app .get active sheet, and we want to get the range and our range we can actually instead of using row and column we can actually type in the um, A1 notation and so I'm going to do we're going to start with B1 down to G30 and that'll get all of our values here uh, so we're going to put in B1 to G30. That's simple. And then we're going to get the values. And that'll return the values as a multidimensional array into values. So we got to then sort that into um, uh, it down into the kind of object that we're going to use. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, let's get the headers. We can get those very easily by just shifting off that very first element. Next, we've got to reduce this multidimensional array down into one big array. So instead of having an array with these square brackets, I'll zoom in a little bit, square brackets, uh, and then you've got each row, you know, that is also three and four. So You've got a bunch of arrays representing the rows inside of one big array, which is what you have here. We're going to actually reduce that down. So I'm going to call it merged. We're going to get these values. We're going to reduce. Reduce takes a function and parameters A and B, and it returns um, a modification A being Right, it's going to go through every value, and then it allows you to, you know, A being one. This is really hard. The rows, B being the second. So we're going to actually concatenate them. Um, if you need more information on this, uh, the documentation, the MSDN documentation in JavaScript is much better than my explanation. But basically, you're just reducing a multidimensional array into a one-dimensional array. Array. Um, and there we should have, let's go ahead and log that, and we should have missing, whoops, not a regular colon, we want a semicolon. And there we should have one big array. And you see you've got a couple of empties at the end. Let's filter those out. We can actually then do, let's pick filter. That also takes a function with just, um, we can just pass in A to that. It takes a couple of parameters, like you can have the, uh, it goes through every value in the array, right? Then that'll be the first parameter, is that every value. Then the second parameter would be the index. Third parameter would be the whole array itself. We only need to use this one, because we're going to return um, A is not equal to, I think, null or undefined. Let's see. Let's run that and see what it gives us. Nope, it still has those at the end. Let's try um, undefined. Nope, still has those. Let's just try an empty string. There we go. Filtered those out. I, I actually don't know. When it grabs an empty cell, I don't know what that uh, variable translates to. Apparently, it's just an empty string. So that lets us filter that out. So the reduce and filter, really cool array methods that you can use. And we're going to do one more. We're going to go ahead and do one more. We're going to call this... Um, Let's call it uh, hmm. Call it days, 
we're going to then take those merged values and we're going to map them. Map again, it's going to go through the whole array one at a time, and we're going to do some stuff to the parameters. We're going to actually pass it uh, every one of its parameters. So each is going to be each value in the array, end is going to be the index, and then array is going to be the whole array itself, which you're actually starting with. And then let's log the whole thing there. So um, in this, we've got to return something. We know we're going to return something. And we're actually going to return an object. We're going to modify. But um, we got to do some. we got to manipulate this data a little bit. Um, the first thing we want to do is let's go ahead and declare a couple of values also at the top, just a couple of static values, because we know we're going to start um, in month seven, which is, it sounds like it should be July, but in the world of JavaScript, it's actually August. And we're going to start with the year. Um, we need to actually, our year is 2017. Okay, just a couple of, um, static variables here. So we're going to actually set the month and the year here depending on where it goes. Because we want to go through every single value, right, and then give it a month. But because it doesn't really understand, JavaScript doesn't understand this table the same way that we do, um, when we look at it, we actually have to kind of manipulate it a little bit. So I'm going to put some ternary uh, ternary values in here. So if the array with index less than one is less than the array of index, we're going to pass the month. The same, it's going to stay the same. Or we're going to use another ternary. Month is less than 11, uh, which is going to be December because it's a zero index little scale here. Then we're going to add one. Um, or go back to zero, which would be January, right? So when it gets to the end of the year, um, well, if it's less than 11, we're going to just add one to increase the month, or we're going to go back to January, right? That'll be when you transfer over from 2017 to 2018. And then the year is going to be month um, equal to zero, and the array with index minus one, it's less than array index. Then we're going to add one to the year. Or it's just going to be the same year. And that should just move 2017 up to 2018 on January 1st. That's all we're doing with those two, that bunch of ternary, those ternary operators here. It's basically saying it's an if. It's an if-else statement um, with just you know two. It's a really simplified if-else statement. It's basically what a ternary is. So then we're going to return cycle, circle, no nope, cycle, and we want that to be headers, just index, and we're going to use this. Um, ooh, I forget what you call this. Um, Oh, the it, it returns the remainder when you divide. So basically what it will allow us to do would be um, to say these headers, A1, B2, C3, D4, uh, it's going to cycle through them. So then we want to do year, and that's just going to be the year. Month, it's just going to be the month. Um, you can't use ES6 syntax in this yet. If you're familiar with JavaScript at all, and in new uh, ES6 or ES2016, uh, whatever they're calling it, ES next, you should be able to just type month, but uh, we're not quite there yet with this uh, version of JavaScript. So let's see what that gives us. We're going to log that. I is not defined. Oh, I want to do index. And in fact, instead of uh, doing that, I'll just do I. And that 
gave us something here. Okay, so month seven, like I said, that is August, year 2017, A1, day 16. So the next day should be B2, seven, B2. And then it's going to cycle every day through here. And that gives us a nice, cool little calendar. In the next video, we're going to talk about uh, how we're then going to push this as events into Google calendars. If you like this video, stay tuned uh, for that. Check me out on Reddit at Teachers Can Code and Twitter uh, at RayJT. Please engage with me. I love talking about how to use these kinds of projects in your classrooms. Cheers, everybody.